Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jimbo and today we're going to be doing one of the most taboo things you could do in the detailing industry and we're going to be actually doing a paint polishing in direct sun. So what I want to show in this video is that though you may get called a hack, it is actually doable to detail in direct sun and to get near perfect paint correction if you choose the correct polishes and the correct materials. So uh, I got a couple different polishes here today that I'll explain once we get out there. A cordless polisher, we're in direct sun on a black panel, pretty much as worse, uh, the worst it possibly could be. And I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to, uh, so you can deliver and get that perfect finish if your only option is in direct sun. And I will say as a disclaimer, uh, obviously it's not as comfortable, the products don't work all the way as intended, though we can get through it, but just as a disclaimer, it is ideal to polish paint in a enclosed environment, but it's not always the only option that we have, or it's not always just an option that we have. So that's why the purpose of this video, we're gonna kind of show you some tips and tricks on how to get it done if you gotta get it done. All right, let's get into it. As you can see, it's just super bright out, but the first product I'm gonna be using and the one I would probably most recommend is the 3D1. Uh, I just like this as an all around uh, product and the panel is warm to the touch. So I'm gonna also be using the cordless flex polisher, which I'm not in love with. Uh, I feel like it lacks power, but for spot jobs and especially for like prepping the panel, um, it actually does a decent enough job. So the first tip that you're probably gonna have to do is this is a decent size hood, but if I look to my car, it's actually a lot smaller. It's definitely a sedan hood. So the first thing is if you have a big hood, you're gonna wanna work in smaller sections than you normally would um, because what's basically gonna happen is the product is gonna dry out more. So you wanna make sure the reason why, why like 3D or uh, even HD speed or 3D speed um, is the fact that the product itself is workable. I, I, I've worked with both of them and know that you can work with both of them in direct sun. So what you're gonna see is even though this panel is hot and what you wanna look for and what you want your eye to do is you wanna be watching the compound and the product from where you're polishing to see if it's starting to cake up on you, is it starting to dry up? And I'm just gonna do a couple passes and then I'm actually gonna leave it. So the next tip is you're probably gonna want to uh, add a little bit more product than you normally would. But as you can see, what do we do? Two cross hatch and then one up and down. And my arm speed is a little bit faster. I'm all around working a little bit quicker and again, for you naysayers, this is not ideal. It's not that I'm, it's also not that I'm not recommending it. I'm just kind of showing some tips. So we're gonna switch it up and go over to the other side. I'm not gonna wipe that off because I wanna do a demonstration. And on the other side, I'm changing up the pad. It's just a Meguiar's pad and we're gonna be using uh, the Ultra Pro Speed Compound, this is M110. It's, it's I like M100. M110 is good, but I like M100. I hate 105, but I feel like 110 is a little bit dustier, or it can get dustier as it clogs up the pad. Uh, I'm using this on a Meguiar's Thin Foam Yellow Pad. Again, about the same. It'll be interesting to see what it does over there. So the M110 is, gonna dry out a little bit faster as I suspect. You may have a little bit uh, better correction. I don't know, the 3D one is, is pretty good, but it may get dustier as it starts to dry out. And again, my eye is looking in two places. My eye is looking at where I'm going, but my eye is also paying attention to what is the compound drying out? Is it looking like it's whiter? Is it looking like it's dustier? What is it looking like? And a lot of detailing is just that, kind of paying attention to all the variables around you. So, do that. And honestly, as you can see, 
both these products, though they may not say it, can be used in direct sun. I think I gave the Meguiar's one an extra pass on that, but that's okay. But you're gonna wanna be probably cleaning your pad more often. You're gonna be wanting to use a little bit more product. You're gonna be wanting to chase shade if you can. I just wanna get some of this dust off here. You're gonna be wanting to chase shade if you can. Uh, if you can't, it is what it is. But even putting an easy up up or something like that would be extremely, extremely beneficial. And another tip, when you go to wipe off, now I'm purposefully letting this sit a little bit, but we'll go over to the 3D side and look at it. But when you go to wipe off, one thing you may wanna do, and if you have to work in direct sun, is use a wet towel or a damp towel or a detail spray to help break up. But you see right there, that is exactly why I like 3D1, is just the workability of it, and it's not drying out on the panel. Now this towel is a little damp, but nothing crazy. And you can kind of feel it under the towel. It's a little sticky, but just a little wetness. And you're gonna be able to clean that right up, All right? Very simple, hot panel, direct sun, working it a few, you know, three, three goes. And same with the 110. Let's see, I can get out of the shadow there. The 110, again, it's, kind of similar to the 3D1 um, is going to be um, just as easy to remove. Now you're gonna, like I said, work smaller sections, but I wanted to show that you can, even in unideal situations, and see, this is where I don't like 110, the, it's getting a little streaky, it's a little bit harder to remove because of the heat, and trust me, I understand I'm using this off label, but it's a little bit harder. So you're gonna have to press into it a little bit. And I'm not sure if the, the camera's picking it up all the way, but because I'm having to kind of dig it off a little bit better, the wipe off isn't as smooth, even with the wet towel, it's streaking it and it could cause some scratching. So again, not ideal, but that is a quick tip with a couple maneuvers in there to where if you have to, you can polish in direct sun. Let's see, I missed a spot way down here. Grab another towel and get that. But if you have to, you can polish in direct sun. And that's where I love how the chemicals are coming so far in the detailing industry to where they're helping mobile guys out. So for a perspective, the 3D1 was much easier to remove than the 110. But there you go. That's how you can uh, polish in direct sun on hot panels. All right, so what did you guys think about that? I know I'm gonna get a ton of flack, but I wanted to help some of the mobile detailers out there and showing them that you can achieve shop level quality if you pick the correct compounds, polishes, machine, pads, kind of all the variables. And maybe I will do an additional video kind of going even deeper into this. Maybe I'll do a little bit of wet sanding and then polishing out, maybe even get into a rotary in direct sunlight. And I know, I just keep reiterating it because I know people are gonna say it or uh, wanna say it, but this is not ideal, but not every car is in the most ideal situation. So I wanna give you options for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Hope you'll be nice to me in the comments below and I will catch you guys on the next video. See ya.